It is morning and the sun is rising on the Indian River Lagoon, one of the most unique bodies of water in North America. Fed by three separate water sources, the Indian River, the Mosquito Lagoon, and the Banana River, the Indian River Lagoon is, in fact, an estuary. It spans 156 miles along Florida's eastern coastline, embracing six counties within its watershed. Many of us pass by this seemingly unassuming body of water every day and never stop to think about how extraordinary it is. An estuary is a, an area where fresh water running off the, the land meets and mixes with salt water from the ocean. A lagoon is a special type of estuary where there is very, very limited exchange between the ocean and the, and the lagoon itself. It's more like a lake, but it is, there is seawater coming in from the ocean. Again, we have a limited number of small inlets that connect the Indian River Lagoon to the ocean, and we have a fair amount of, a small amount of fresh water coming in from most of the watershed. So, just what makes the Indian River Lagoon so special? To begin with, the lagoon is a semi-combined body of brackish water, which is characterized by the mixing of saline marine water with fresh water from upland sources. The water exchange between the Indian River Lagoon and the Atlantic Ocean occurs at natural cuts in the barrier island chain, the Oceanic Inlets. The Indian River Lagoon uh, is very unique in that it is considered to be the most biologically diverse estuary in North America. We have over 4,300 uh, listed species of plants and animals uh, that have been inventoried in our estuary and there are more being discovered uh, every day. So uh, it's unique in the fact that uh, we have two climatic zones uh, that converge over our estuary, the tropical uh, climatic zone from the south and the Caribbean and the more temperate uh, zone from the Carolinas basically kind of merge in this, this area at the Cape Canaveral. And that's why we get a lot of unique diversity in here because uh, we get species from both climatic zones in the lagoon. The convergence of the two climate zones joined by the confluence of two water types creates a situation which allows for widely varied habitats. Because of this, the Indian River Lagoon is the most biologically diverse estuary in North America. No other estuary here has as many species of plants and animals represented within its borders. It is home to more than 4,300 species of flora and fauna, with new species being regularly discovered. The ecosystems which these creatures inhabit have developed due to the delicate balance of fresh and salt water found in the lagoon, and the salinity of the water in, is its major factor in keeping this balance in check. Due to its particular makeup, the lagoon is sensitive to fresh water discharges, particularly storm water runoff and associated pollutants. The major, the major type of pollution that's affecting the Indian River Lagoon is what's called non-point source pollution. It is a, a type of pollution that comes from various sources that is very, very difficult to identify that the pollutant came from specifically there. Probably the primary example of that is not is, is stormwater pollution, i.e. the rain comes out of the, out, of, out of the atmosphere, lands on the ground, it runs off and carries with it a, a variety of pollutants. Where specifically it came from, we don't know. All of that uh, stormwater has basically been diverted into the Indian River Lagoon and that has caused uh, water quality to deteriorate and uh, has thereby impacted seagrasses. Seagrasses are considered the basis of the lagoon's ecosystem. They provide a lot of habitat for fisheries and, and other uh, animals in the lagoon and uh, so when water quality deteriorates, uh, light is not able to reach the seagrasses in the bottom of the lagoon and therefore the seagrasses are diminished. The native species of those that are normally found here have been found here since you know, throughout history. Non-natives are those that were introduced. We have many of those uh, plant and animal things such as various mussels that are coming in. We have a, a Australian spotted jellyfish which has shown up here from time to time. We have a whole host of plants which were brought in for landscaping and other purposes. We have the big three, Australian pine, Mulaluca, and Brazilian pepper, which are exotics, which are found, non-native exotics, which are found throughout the system, which are crowding out some of our native habitats. Well, the greatest challenge to the Indian River Lagoon probably goes back to the old pogo thing. The problem is us. 
It is generally man's activities that have affected the affected the Indian River Lagoon. We have brought in all sorts of uh, all sorts of plants and animals. We have uh, altered the landscape. We have uh, filled the well marshes, dug out the excavated the rivers, uh, and and released all sorts of all sorts of pollutants. And uh, basically, it, it, the problem is us. About the license plate program, the funds that are raised, uh, they go to projects. They may be educational projects or turn dirt projects, such as uh, shoreline restoration or uh, stormwater retrofitting. We'll, we'll cost share with communities that are, uh, they might have, say, an old stormwater system where pollution is running directly into the lagoon, and we'll go in there and help fund a project that might provide sediment traps or things of that nature that capture the pollution. It's raised about four and a half million dollars since its inception at this point, just on people purchasing the tech. And what's nice is that you, it's almost like you could say it's double that because most of the projects that we fund with this are cost shared. So if we put up a certain amount of snook money, say a city wanting to do a stormwater project or an entity wanting to do a shoreline restoration project, they might have to do matching funds. So you could almost pretty much safely say you're doubling that, so it's probably more like say $9 million that is raised towards actual projects. Efforts are being made to stabilize the region and stave off the demands impinged by human development. Purchasing the Indian River Lagoon Conservation Tag supports these efforts and helps raise awareness of the challenges facing this unique ecosystem.